Hey there! In this video, I will show you on my example what possibilities are already offered to us by large language models, such as GPT-4, when we combine them with our computer, phone, and various applications. To start, let's go to my favorite text error, IA Writer. Despite the fact that its name may suggest otherwise, it doesn't have any built-in functionality that utilizes artificial intelligence. However, if I ask a question here like this, after a while in my clipboard, the following answer will appear. Without a doubt, we have a connection with GPT-4, which is additionally controlled by a certain instruction containing communication rules and certain information such as my name. However, it turns out that these instructions are not fixed and can vary depending on the context, and in this case, from the pressed keyboard shortcut. This task illustrates it quite well the question that in this case I would like to translate into English. Therefore, right after running this action, I receive the following result. Clearly, we can see here that the instruction that worked changed the behavior of the model in such a way that instead of answering the question, it performed a translation. As you can probably guess, we can use similar patterns to make corrections, generate code, or play music on Spotify. I activated this application to show that indeed this music has been played. This means that we have integration not only with external services, but also directly with my computer. Another example could be calendar management. For example, here I have a note about two meetings. If I now just activate my calendar and then run this action, we will soon see that these two meetings will indeed be added here. Indeed, it happened, but it turns out that just adding events is not everything. There is nothing stopping us from, for example, canceling or moving one of the events. Just describe what I need at the moment. In this case, it will be the removal of this second meeting, which disappears after a while. Of course, in a situation where we perform operations only on one event, it will be much better in most cases to open the calendar and simply do it. However, if we need to add, for example, two events, move others, and still cancel some, then suddenly it may be better to write it in two sentences than to interrupt the currently performed task, especially since I would like to emphasize the fact that all these actions that are performed here are not available only in my text editor but in any application on my computer and even on my iPhone, including voice integration with Siri. This means that, for example, while driving a car, I can dictate changes that I want to make in my calendar or to-do list. Moving on, you may already be aware that GPT-4 does not have information on current events and is not very good at performing calculations. Despite this, as you can see, I received a correct answer to the question about currency exchange rates exactly the same as what Google suggests at the moment. The same goes for calculations, especially those involving larger numbers. If we now switch to ChatGPT to perform such a calculation, we can be almost certain that we will get an incorrect answer. However, it turns out that if I ask the same question to my assistant, the result returned will be completely correct. And of course, I can also include here greater precision, including decimal places. In any case, we can clearly see here that in my case, we are dealing with something more than just GPT-4. In practice, however, it is exactly GPT-4, but equipped with a range of tools and integrations that enhance its current capabilities. That is why, when asked about the latest version of the Tauri framework, I get the following answer. Here we have a mention that based on current search results, the latest version is 2.0 alpha, but the latest stable version is 1.4. If we now go to the Tauri Framework website, we will see that this answer is correct. If you are now wondering how it is even possible that I am talking to GPT from a regular notepad, the answer to this question is the Alice application designed by me. I will just mention that some of the functionality I showed is available either through my own snippets or through integration with my private API, which offers a range of complex possibilities. In any case, these snippets are assigned to keyboard shortcuts in the settings, allowing me to access their capabilities from any application on my computer. The additional connection to an external API also gives me the mentioned capabilities, for example, connecting Alice to Slack or directly, as I already mentioned, from Siri. 
Another great example of such advanced integration is the ability to read web pages, which in this case Alice selects on its own. Of course, it takes a bit longer, but the most important thing is that the generated answer is very precise and based on the current React.js documentation. If we compare the answer itself with the content of the documentation, we will see that they are almost exactly the same words. Such a generated answer is incredibly useful, and even if I have to wait a bit longer for it, the fact itself is the drastic reduction of hallucination risk, the model is simply worth it. In all of this, there is still one very important element. Namely, in addition to having access to current knowledge obtained from the internet, Alice also has access to rich knowledge about me. This information comes from sources such as my publications or social media profiles. In this case, since I'm asking about books, Alice refers to information about my Goodreads profile to suggest two titles that I have actually read. Additionally, we also have a link directing directly to the page associated with that specific book. I'm showing this because you probably know that in most cases, links returned directly by ChatGPT are either outdated or simply never existed. And now, the coolest thing about this is that this is exactly how I can search through my excellent memory for various types of information, which I can then save as a quick note that goes directly to my Notion. Something like this works brilliantly for purposes such as exploring a topic, or reminding myself of various facts that I need to accomplish specific tasks. If we now go to my Notion, we will see that in the Quick Notes section, the message we had here actually appeared. Now, equally interesting, these mechanisms can also be used in the background. For example, you can imagine that, for instance, Alice refers to her task list here, and then, if she finds any information in her memory that can help me, she can also place it here, in the Quick Notes section. The same applies to publications available here, which Alice can also read for me, and present not only as a regular summary, but also in comparison with her other memories. A great example of this in everyday life is when I reach for a new book. Before I start, Alice presents it to me in the light of the books I have read before. This way, I can better understand the content of the book I'm currently reading, or even evaluate whether it's worth reading at all. The last thing I want to draw special attention to here is that in the case of the application, I had a number of snippets available that I could activate manually or with the help of a keyboard shortcut. However, my private version of this application simply allows me to have a regular conversation with Alice, who independently decides whether to take any action or, for example, search the appropriate area of her memory. For instance, when I ask about books I have read, Alice searches her memories about me. However, if the question were directly from external sources, such as documentation or direct content from books, then Alice reached for a slightly different area of memory that may contain data on the subject. In addition to using her own memories, Alice also uses special models offered by OpenAI to recognize commands and use external tools. Thanks to this, without the need for selecting any secrets, when I asked to save a quick note, it was identified as a command requiring action and the conversation context containing the note that was supposed to go to Notion. After completing such a task, I received only confirmation that it was actually done. I don't have to use special commands or keywords for Alice to know what I mean. If a task is not completed entirely according to my expectations, or Alice for some reason does not reach a specific piece of information that she has in her memory, she practically becomes better and more effective from day to day. This plays a significant role in all of this, the overall development of models that we observe both in OpenAI and in the case of competition and even open source models. So now the question is, how can you implement something like this yourself? We definitely need a direct connection to OpenAI through the API. I personally hardly use ChatGPT anymore because the level of personalization and the capabilities I have directly in my integration far exceed what ChatGPT currently offers. We can use the OpenAI API directly through the Alice app that can be downloaded for free on the heyalice.app website. Currently, about 2,000 people have access to the application. I will just add here, so that there are no doubts, that at least for now, 
practically all operations performed inside the Alice application are carried out directly between your computer and OpenAI servers. Remember, however, that everything you send to OpenAI stays between you and them. An alternative may be the Shortcuts application, where you can define practically the same snippets and also connect directly to OpenAI. What's more, the advantage of using shortcuts is that you can run the integration also on your phone or use them from Siri, especially since it's basically about copying and pasting a snippet that is responsible for performing a specific task. If you're working on Windows, then the Alice application is also available on this operating system. Again, if for some reason you don't want to use it, currently the only known way is to use the Auto Hotkey application, although in this case, preparing the integration is extremely complicated and has a number of limitations. Once you decide how you want to interact with OpenAI, the next step is to prepare the automation scenario and the prompt that will use it. This particular example I'm showing here is responsible for managing all my tasks quite complexly. In practice, however, you will often need much simpler automations or even ones that are as simple as this and basically perform one or two queries to external APIs. For example, this scenario connects to the Wolfram Alpha model and allows Alice to perform precise calculations or access current data on currencies or weather information. I'm showing this automation here prepared on the Make.com platform to indicate that it is often not worth writing various solutions from scratch that involve, for example, transferring data between different services, because clicking such a scenario can often be much simpler and also much more flexible. Naturally, there are situations where such solutions simply don't work. Then it is necessary to use software and adapt the functionality entirely to your needs. When it comes to projects that use such scenarios or scripts, with Spotify as an example, I'll show you that it's quite simple. Namely, we define here a prompt that gives us context. Then it presents a set of rules for using a given scenario. And these rules almost always describe how the structure of the JSON object containing information to be sent to the scenario should look like. In all of this, we just need to make sure that a JSON object is returned every time, and the model won't try to perform the task for us. To send such a JSON object, we need to activate a remote action here, and then save the webhook address here associated with the make.com scenario or our external service. When we want Alice to receive a response, we need to add a webhook response action that will send a simple object with a single property, data. So, to sum up, we need a direct connection to the API. It's best to assign a keyboard shortcut to the project that uses the scenario by sending in one way and the other of JSON objects with a fixed structure and values built based on the current conversation. However, if you are interested at all in building the concept of an assistant or mechanisms that utilize, for example, long-term memory and the ability to recognize the necessary action to take during the conversation, I recommend familiarizing yourself primarily with the capabilities of models adapted to invoking functions and also expanding your knowledge about vector databases, embeddings, and storage and retrieval strategies for the needs of large language models. Here I will only add that vector databases are not the only answer to this question, and often we will deal here with hybrid search using engines such as Elasticsearch or Algolia combined with vector databases such as Pinecone or, for example, the open source QDRANT. The last element of such advanced development of these types of systems is the use of ready-made tools or their components. And here I mean in particular Langchain. It is a framework that I personally use in the case of Alice, but I don't use all of its elements, only selected tools that make it easier for me, for example, to load data, divide it into smaller fragments, or read a web page and answer questions based on its content. The effect of some of these elements could be seen in the examples I presented. At the core of all these mentioned elements that will allow you to integrate large language models with application code or automation lies, of course, the design of prompts, i.e. broadly understood prompt engineering. Ultimately, however, 
understanding this area is definitely easier than the skills associated with designing databases that will only use elements of large language models. For example, the logic of Alice's operation is based on conversation control, detecting user intentions, or generally building conversations and performing remote actions, which also include interactions with its own API. For example, one of the tools used by Alice is her own memory, with which she can interact to add memories or update their content. So from a programming point of view, when we look at this code, we have a classic web application where the logic is designed to integrate with large language models and connect with external tools, services, devices, or even other models, such as the mentioned Wolfram Alpha. As for this material, that's it. I hope your general understanding of the current capabilities of large language models has been greatly enriched and may inspire you to build your own solutions. Meanwhile, I have nothing else to do but thank you for your attention and wish you a nice day. See you in the next videos.